Hey guys, Thomas Darren here, Strength and Conditioning Coordinator at the Royal Military College of Canada, and today we are going to talk about foot adaptations and reducing the risk of inter injuries during running and rucking on your way to a selection, a course, a deployment, or even a competition, so stay tuned. One of the most common mistakes we see soldiers make is after a long period of very little military training, strapping on their boots, putting on a 50 pound ruck and going for a run, only to either break their foot, smash their knee or have lower back pain. For most people, there's too big of a stress going from day to day life to now trying to perform maximally. We need to gradually increase this stress in order for our body to be able to adapt and best prepare us for performance. This has been especially true with the work that I've done with the Sandhurst team over the past seven years. At the start of the season, everybody wants to go flying out of the gate and training hard, but this is how injuries have happened in the past. So for the last few years, we have really, really focused on implementing some very basic methods in the first month or two of training that allow us to build up to higher rucking and running volumes and to remain injury free. The first method that we employ is removing our shoes and going barefoot for almost all of our warm up activities and as much of our non impact training as possible. Most people wear some form of footwear all day long. This stops the foot from having to do as much work as normal and it passes that responsibility on to the shoe. Spending more time barefoot allows the foot to understand it must stay strong, supportive and healthy, which then reduces risks once we start putting on boots and shoes later on in the training season. Method number two, not putting on boots until month one or two into the training season. Military boots are unnatural, they're restrictive, and they're actually over supportive. So their strengths are actually also their weaknesses. The reason for that is that they limit joint movement and because of their thick sole, they limit natural foot function in order to protect the soldier. So what that means for us is the stronger we can get our fascia and the musculature of our feet, the less likely we're gonna experience injuries once putting these on, the more likely we're gonna have an improved performance and overall, we're just gonna have a better experience once we start exercising in these boots. Method three is actually a little bit more practical. So what I've been doing is actually adding a little bit more dynamic foot and ankle movements into the warm up in order to get the ankles and the feet used to adapting to a more dynamic environment before we start putting them into restrictive footwear. So the first exercise that we've actually used quite a bit in the last couple of years is what I call plate circles. So standing on one leg, what you're gonna do, stand on one leg, knee at 90 degrees, or you can just go foot out, and you're going to move a plate around your body, let's say 10 to 12 reps on one leg, or one direction, and then you switch to the opposite side. So I can go left, I can go right. In order to add more challenge to this, I can add more weight. I can also close my eyes, which makes this drill a lot more difficult. Or if I really want to add a challenge, I can also add a little bit of instability to it in standing on a bench that has a lot of padding. As you can see, as I'm rotating, my ankle has to constantly adjust to a changing dynamic environment, which is very, very similar to what you're gonna experience when you're running or rucking on a trail. So really this is just like level one of getting used to that type of um, stability that's required. And we can start building that into our warmups so that when we do transfer over to more high intensity work, it's already gonna be there as part of your baseline. Lastly, for method number four, I'd like to introduce you guys to a concept you probably have not heard about before, and that's called aerobic plyometrics. At the start of a training cycle, this is a great tool for you to incorporate into your warm up in order to increase muscle pliability and muscular endurance, which are all great things in order to help you sustain higher stress loads over time. For this drill, 
we are going to use a low or a mid height hurdle rather than a high one like we would use for typical plyometrics. We are going to aim for 18 to 15 consecutive jumps unlike plyos that are done for power that are typically done for one to five reps. Jump mechanics will still need to be good in that the eyes are gonna stay straight. We are going to minimize ground contact time, making sure we have very quiet feet and we're absorbing our landings. We are going to engage the glutes to stop a valgus knee collapse and we are going to use our arms for proper timing. We are going to start with three to five minutes of this using eight to 10 hurdles and a 10 seconds rest at the start of our training season. As we progress in the first month to two months, we are going to add up to 15 hurdles and also con consecutively do this drill for eight to 12 minutes. This is going to really, really, really teach your joints to be able to absorb force and to build endurance during dynamic and explosive movements. As athletes progress, we can also change the distance between some hurdles to remove the uniformity from the drill. And there you have it guys. Try incorporating one, two, three, or even four of these methods into your training and start reaping the rewards of injury-free performance. Until next time, see ya, peace.